Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for checking out this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do a force layout graph in D3. Now these types of graphs are probably a bit different than things like line charts and bar charts and the usual ways that you visualize data. So uh, I wanted to just break this down for you as simply as I possibly can. So I'm going to switch over to my browser now and I'll walk you through this. Okay, so here on Cloud9 IDE, I have my environment, and it's just an HTML environment. If you've never set one up before, you can just go create an account at c9.io. Uh, it's free. You can sign in with GitHub and all that. Uh, there's other ways to do it, but this is just a way I like to teach uh, because it kind of takes away the environment configuration and worries about that. So it's just simple web stuff. So the first thing to do in this example is just kind of set up our HTML document. So put in my doc type, HTML set up my char set, UTF-8. Uh, I'm gonna actually put in some styling info. Uh, later we could have done this, but I just wanna not have to come back and type it. So the way that force layouts work is that they have kind of two things, nodes and links. And a node is uh, something that represents an entity, like a row of your data. So if you have a CSV file, uh, every row essentially could be or, or probably is going to be a node for you. Then you have links and ways that they connect. So uh, that's what we're going to draw. And I'm going to have two different style options here. So the first one is just a class of node. And with that, I'm going to put in a fill of this kind of light gray. And I'll give it a stroke of white and a stroke width of two pixels. So you can set up whatever you want. These are just some kind of examples here. Uh, and then the next one is the link. So the line between them. So here we're gonna do stroke and we'll just do kind of a dark gray, pound 777, and stroke width of two pixels as well. So again, you can play with that, change it however you want. All right, I'm just gonna save this quickly as demo simple layout.html. Okay, cool. <clears throat> All right, so we got my style info. Now I need to actually kind of build some stuff. So I'll create my body tag and I'm gonna reference D3 here. So I just do a script source equals and it's whack whack d3js.org slash d3.v3.min.js. By the way, version four is almost here if it isn't already by the time this posts. Uh, so get ready for that. I'm gonna have some stuff coming out on that because it is quite different than how D3 version three works. So I wanna make sure you guys have everything you need to kind of uh, convert it and all that. And I'm kind of digesting all the changes right now. There's quite, quite a big list. Okay, so now we're gonna set up our variables here. So width, we'll just do 640 for this example. Height, 480. And links, so remember there's two things here. There's the links and the nodes. And the way I like to do this is to basically just have one data set because while I'm just gonna show you how to punch it in and type the data in manually, uh, often what you'll have is a CSV file. Uh, and I'll even point you to an example here, some other code I have that demonstrates that. But for right now, what we're gonna do first is just set up the links, and then we'll tease out of that the nodes. And remember, the nodes are the, the rows, and the links actually are the for, from and the to, the source and the target is, is what it comes out to be. And that tells D3 in our layout how to draw stuff between one node and the other. Okay, so for our links, this is gonna be an array. So just set it up there, and somehow my autocomplete got turned off in my environment, so a lot of extra typing. All right, so I'm gonna set up some source, and I'm gonna do some fun Game of Thrones stuff. Uh, let's do the Baratheons. And the target here would be the Lannisters. And close that out, and basically rinse and repeat. Let's do, I don't know, maybe four of these, five of these. Let's actually just do three for now. So let's do a Baratheon, and then uh, Stark, and then how about Lannister and Stark? Right, Baratheon and Lannister, Baratheon, Stark. Okay, so we can kind of play with that. So there you go. So I've got just a couple examples. There's just three nodes, essentially, that'll be drawn with links. Um, then from there, what I want to do is actually set up my nodes. So I'm going to just create a, a simple variable var nodes, basically give it a, a blank node. So there's really nothing in there. 
Then I need to parse things out. So here's where it actually is some code that has to parse out what are in the links and create the nodes from that. This is a little snippet I found on one of Mike Bostock's examples. So I'm just gonna put a note there, parse links to nodes. And we're just gonna do links for each. So it gives us a little loop here. And inside there we'll have a callback function with the link. So we're gonna reference it that way. And what do I need? One more of these guys and then that guy. Again, without autocomplete, <laughs> it sucks. Uh, so link.source. So we're gonna take the source from our links array above. And then we're gonna do something. We're gonna say nodes and then link.source. So we're essentially gonna add that, right? Because this is gonna give us that link, that name, Baratheon and Lannister. Or nodes link.source equals name link.source. So if we have the same one repeated, we're not going to get extra nodes. So this is just a little kind of clever snippet here to add them and not uh, duplicate them. Now we're going to do link.target. So for each target in our list, we're going to do nodes and do link.target. So now if you weren't in the source, but you were in the target, we're gonna add you as well. And basically rinse and repeat the same stuff we did before. So nodes, link.target. Yeah, if I could type. Pressure's on when you're filming. Uh, and that equals link.target as well. So basically the idea there again is that if these uh, already exist, update them, uh, or you know, it, it's good, don't worry about it, uh, otherwise add them. So that's how we're gonna actually parse out our links into our nodes. So we have both of our data structures, and D3 wants two kind of different data structures here. Of course, you could have things a bit more complex, but I like to keep them simple because there's enough complexity in how this stuff works to begin with, so I wanna just keep it as simple as possible. Uh, now we just need to add our SVG to our body, so this is when we actually start to do the D3 stuff. And we're gonna do var SVG equals D3.select body dot append SVG. So this gives us our place to draw stuff. Set up some attributes. Uh, width is the width that we specified above. Height is the height that we specified above. Good to go. Okay, now let's create our force layout. So we get to use the force. And if you watch my plural site course, I abuse that term. So apologies in advance. Um, so we set up d3.layout.force. So this is the actual constructor that creates it. Um, and then we need to specify all the parameters. So the first one is size. We give it an array of width, comma, height. Then nodes. Now this is where we actually pass in our data set. So you'll see a lot of examples online where they just pass in a separate data set. But here, because we created it a little bit differently, we're actually gonna do d3.values and nodes. So inside of the nodes array, basically the values that are in there, and they're just each, just like the links one, kind of a flat data set. The links are good. We just pass those directly in. So we specified the nodes and the links. Now we have something here called on tick. And this is when uh, the force layout renders and then you do something in it, uh, like drag something around or even just hovering or clicking or any, any of those things that happen. Um, this, this function will execute here. So <clears throat> you need to specify that. So then we have link distance. And I just put 300 here. Link distance is how far apart the nodes are. Uh, in my course, I go deeper into things like charge and gravity and, and link strength and all those other things. But for now, just don't worry about it. Let's just keep it simple. And then we actually have to tell it starts. This is a, like you know how the actual layout starts to render. So we've got our fourth layout. Uh, now, we've got, now that that's created, we need to add our links and then our nodes. So we'll do var link equals SVG dot select all and we're going to do dot link we haven't added any yet but if we did we would get them then we pass in our data so dot data and we got our links enter this is what actually binds the data in that links array to the svg it's kind of the, one of the main things about d3 then we're going to append a line uh, there's other ways to do this like if you wanted a curved line which is common you actually have to append a path 
which is a way to draw uh, different types of shapes or different kind of polygons in D3 or in SVG rather. Um, so you could do that there separately. And there's other examples online as well as my course. I go deeper into it. Uh, for here, though, let's just add it like that. Um, then we're going to add a class of link. So this way we get our CSS styling. Okay, cool. So links are set up. Now it's the nodes turns. Nodes is turns is. So node equals SVG dot select all, similar to what we did before. Uh, this time dot node dot data. And here it's actually going to be force dot nodes. It's just an easier way to reference it because uh, the nodes are already in the force layout. Enter to bind it. And now we're going to append this time a circle. So we're giving a getting a SVG circle out of this. Uh, specify the class of node. And I'm also going to specify the radius here. So the how big the actual circles are. I'm going to do the width of the SVG times 0 0.03. You can adjust that, and of course, that could be more dynamic. All right, good to go. Now we need to create our tick function. So, what actually happens when uh, something in the in the viz changes? So, I'll do function tick. Uh, you get this e parameter, which has things like the position and all that kind of jazz. Um, we're actually not going to really use that, but it's just good to have in case you want to modify this. So, we need to specify for the node. Um, the CX and the CY. So the CX is the relative X position of the node. Um, so we'll have a function here, and this is part of the D3 stuff as well. And in that function, we're going to return the actual D dot X. All right, got that one. Then, whoops, autocomplete decided to start working. Now we'll specify the CY. And same as before, function, except we're going to do return d dot y. All right, that's good for our nodes with the exception of call. And we're going to add force dot drag. So with this one, it's actually going to let us drag things around in the viz, which is really cool. It's part of the fun stuff with uh, force layouts. It's funny, too. I, maybe I'm the only one that talks about force layouts being fun, but they're just... <laughs> They seem really cool ways to visualize data and they kind of tell stories in a different way. So I like them for that reason. So now for the links, as things drag around, what we're going to have to do is actually adjust their starting and ending positions. And because a link is a line and it has two points, essentially an X one and a Y one, think back to your calculus days using your, uh, your uh, calculator there in, in your college class. Um, so basically similar to above uh, with some exceptions here, we're going to do return D dot source dot X. And I'm actually just going to copy this, save some typing. And so X1 and Y1 is the beginning. And so it's going to be source.x and Y. And then X2 and Y2 are the ending points. So it's going to be, instead of source, it's going to be target. Close out our script tag, and we should be good to go. Let me just go ahead and save this bad boy and hit preview. Oh, we got an error. Where is it? This is kind of nice because I get to show you how I troubleshoot errors. I opened it up in a new tab there, and then I hit inspect, and it'll give me the JavaScript console. Oops, I had an extra parentheses there on line 37. So back over here, let me go. I don't think I have the line numbers on. There we go. Ah, see, and if I did, I would have known that was an error. Okay, cool. So I messed something up there. Let's take a look. Ah, I'm missing that guy. Save that. Render it here now. And the other thing that I had to fix here was it's not links.source. It's link.source because that's the function we're referencing. And up above, I had to add this for my doc type. Okay, so if you caught those errors, good for you. Um, and here we go. I'll refresh the page now. And bam, there you have it. So a really simple way to draw a force layout. 
Remember, the basic steps are you get your data, and again, you can use a CSV, and I'll put a link down there. You can look at uh, another example. You parse out that data into the nodes, then you add your SVG, you build your forest layout, passing in the links and the nodes, then you add the links and the nodes themselves. Uh, interestingly enough, if I were to swap these out, so if I were to cut that guy and paste him above the other one, and save it now and refresh, Notice how the uh, links are on top of the nodes. It's literally like that because of how it's drawn, because it's inside of an SVG window. Kind of the first things that you know are drawn are kind of like layers on top of the other one. So uh, there's not something like a Z index or a CSS property or something you can set there. Um, it's just uh, how it's actually rendered or how the code is written here. Okay, so then add your links, add your nodes, and then do the tick function. This is again is what lets me drag it around and have it update and see how the, the everything stays in sync as it goes. That's kind of the deal there. All right, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and come back for more. I'll have a lot more D3 stuff coming out on my blog, as well as I have a course specifically on force layouts on Pluralsight coming out soon.